My name is Bill and I don't know much about hydronic heat or anything like that, but I know that I made this system up out of Menards parts and it actually works. I've been using it now for two years, it's the second year, and uh, I've been real happy with it. Uh, just to give you a little background, the reason I'm making this video is because I had a lot of unanswered questions because I couldn't find answers to on YouTube when I was looking into this. And a lot of people had these things with hoses running everywhere and they just were all kind of messy looking and, and not fastened down and I couldn't figure out what they were talking about even sometimes. But anyway, here's the deal. The size of this house that I'm at is important to understand because it depends on what size your house is, what you're going to do. This house is about 1,500 square feet. Its location is in northern Illinois, so it's cold up here. And it was built two years ago, the house, and I put the heating in at the same time. So it's a very well insulated house. Uh, the tubing, the PEX tubing that you see here, it sits on two inches of foam insulation. And the whole outside of the foundation has three, three inches of foam insulation from the footer on up to the top of the foundation which is about three feet. So it's pretty well insulated, the, the slab of the house. And that's what we're heating. The water heater type, uh, I keep the house set at about 70 degrees. I should throw that in there too. The water heater type came from Menards. It's 29 gallon high efficiency water heater, natural gas. 60,000 BTUs. That was one of the things that I never knew in the other YouTube videos is what size I would need for this size of house. I can assure you that it keeps this house at 70 degrees very comfortably with this size water heater and uh, we've never had any issues at all. Typically the water heater I have it set to about 120 degrees. You can set it right here it told us in the thing, which isn't really, it's set on almost, uh, about all just below number four, which it'll go a lot hotter than that. But that's about 120 degrees according to the manufacturer's uh, instructions that came with it. And that's about what it amounts to on my temperature gauge that I have on the system. This is not hooked up to the house for hot water. It's only hooked up to the floor heat. And so I keep the thing, basically, uh, it typically runs in a day about an hour and a half, once, maybe twice a day. That's about it. Uh, how it works, oh, and by the way, this water heater was also recommended for use in hot water floor heat. So that's what we did. The PEX tubing came from Menards again. They were 250 foot coils and uh, if you submit your floor plan to Nibco and it tells you how to do that at Menards, what will happen is they'll send you back a diagram of how to put it in the floor and we staple it down to the insulation before we poured the concrete and it worked out just perfect. Okay, so here's how the system works. When the thermostat calls for heat, it tells the controller, this thing here, it says taco on it. I only have one zone here because it's not that big a house. As it tells the controller to turn on the pump. It supplies the 24 volts for the thermostat and then basically all it is is a relay between the thermostat and this 120 volt pump that turns on the pump. The pump is not very big. It's available at Menards. Uh, this particular one is a 115 volt pump and it uh, I don't remember exactly the size of it. You can see looking at it that it's a ground force pump. That's a nice little pump. Uh, the reason the pump is where it's at is I wanted it to be lower than the water in the water heater so that when I was filling it, it would never run low on water and burn up the pump. So the reason it sits about 
halfway down the tank is because it needs to have water in it at all times. It's also, you'll note, it's on the return side where it pumps the cold water out of the floor back into here. That way, it isn't pumping the hot water all the time. It makes the pump run cooler and it should last longer. As soon as it pumps the cold water in here, it forces the hot water back out of the top of the, the uh, hot water tank and into the system. So it just continually does that. Uh, I was worried about, one of the things I was worried about was how it would get all the air out of all these individual lines. Honestly, it just doesn't when you fill it. It's, it takes a while, it takes a long time to get all the air out of the system, but I'll tell you more about that in a little bit here. So, anyway, as soon as the water, as the pump turns on, then it takes the cold water from the tubing into the hot water heater. The water heater turns on as needed just by the control right here on the water heater that has, that's already been set to 120 degrees. That's going to turn on whenever the water heater needs to raise up the temperature of the water going into the floor. So that just happens automatically. Temperature of this thing and the pressure, I can look at my gauge here. It runs about 18 pounds of pressure and 120 degrees when it's running. Okay, the my particular system, I filled it with a mixture of antifreeze and distilled water. You don't have to do that, but from everything I know about boilers, which ain't much, is that corrosion is the big killer of a hot water heater or a boiler. So I figure if I put antifreeze in here, it's got anti-corrosives in it and distilled water. It has no minerals in it. It's going to make this whole system last a lot longer. The only thing that isn't plastic on here is what little you see here in this area. So uh, I think that this thing should last me for many, many years without any problems whatsoever. Uh, the other thing you should know is come the end of the season, and you're not going to be needing heat anymore. You can simply go over here on this water heater and shut it off right here. And then in the winter time, you turn it right back on. And that way you're not wasting energy all summer long, heating water that you don't need to heat. So this is a, a pretty good system. Now I'm going to talk about how we filled this system. And that was one of the big mysteries from YouTube to me, was how do you fill it? And I was like, well, you got to get pressure on the system. Well, when we did it, just from the drill, we used a drill, an electric drill, a regular 120 volt electric drill, and about a $10 pump that you could buy that goes in the chuck of the drill. And we ran a water hose out of the buckets. We would mix the antifreeze and the distilled water to the mixture we wanted inside of that bucket. And then we would pump it into this valve here, which we would open up, and it would fill up the water heater. And as the water heater was filling, the air would come out our purge valve right here. You can maybe see, I even actually labeled it here so that if something happens and somebody else has to work on this thing someday, that they would understand. The other way we got air out of it was we would open this little air separator thing, and it would let air out of that little vent. But pretty much we, after uh, the initial fill, which probably took us several hours, probably about four hours, maybe five hours to fill it, because it, you have to run the pump and it has to be circulating to get all the air out of all of them lines. And it will eventually go through all of them lines and do that. It's kind of neat when the thing's running, you can stand here and actually touch the one side is cold and the other side is hot. And you can feel it real easy with your hands. And that's about all I got to say about this thing. Uh, I normally talk about other things, but today I'm talking about how to heat your floor. <laughs>